Welcome aboard, mateys. I'm the bosun mate of this ship, and today I've gathered some of my crew to tell you what it was like to be a sailor hundreds of years ago. So let's begin to explore the life of a sailor. To do that, we're going back in time to the days of wooden sailing ships. In those days, a sailor's life was hard and dangerous. Out on the ocean, in a small ship, in all kinds of weather. Ahoy, mate! So we sailors have to work together as a team to keep the ship and ourselves safe. We even have our own language for the parts of the ship. For example, the front of the ship is the bow and the back is the stern. There are masts that hold up the sails and shrouds, that is standing rigging, hold the masts up. The sails are attached to cross pieces called yards. Hoist the yards! We have to climb the standing rigging to haul the sails. Then, men down below handle the lines of rigging to set the sails to catch as much wind as possible. Hauling the sails is one of my jobs. I'm a ship's boy. Since I'm small and don't weigh much, I get to climb the rigging to do the work on the yards. I'm the quartermaster. I help navigate the ship. We use the compass and the sextant to chart our course and steer that course with the ship's wheel. We also need to know how fast the ship is moving to help figure out where we are. We find the ship's speed by throwing a piece of wood with a line attached over the stern. There's a knot tied in the line every so many feet. One of my helpers keeps his hands on the line and counts the knots as they go by. We use a sand glass to check a certain amount of time as the line goes out. Then, it just takes a little bit of arithmetic to figure out the speed. We use flags to signal other ships, to tell them who we are, and to spell out messages too. The flags are in bright colors, so it's easy to read them from a long distance through a telescope. There's another kind of signaling we use, and that's to keep time on the ship. Each crewman stands a four-hour watch every day, and he needs to know when his watch begins and ends. To keep time, we strike a bell every half hour of the watch, using a 30-minute sand glass as a timer. When the bell is struck eight times, the crewman knows his watch is over. I'm the ship's cook. I work long hours getting food ready for the crew. I cook on a little stove that I heat with burning wood. The crew thinks I'm a pretty good cook for a little while after leaving port, but when all the fresh food is gone, they're not as happy with me. For then, we have to rely on preserved meat and old biscuits for our meals. Yeah, life can get pretty unpleasant on long voyage when we run out of fresh food. There's a terrible disease called scurvy that strikes us when we don't eat enough fresh fruits and vegetables. We become weak and depressed, and all sorts of terrible things happen to our bodies that I won't mention, but it's pretty unpleasant. Keeping clean isn't easy either, because fresh water is a problem on a long voyage. It can only be used for drinking and cooking, so we have to wait until it rains to bathe on deck. But after all that hard work on our watch, sleeping isn't a problem. We simply string up our hammocks and snore away. We don't mind not having a bed, because it's easier sleeping in a hammock than when you're on a vessel that never stops moving. But after a rest, we like to gather on deck to sing, dance, and have fun with our hobbies to relax and pass the time. Of course, if we want music, we have to make it ourselves. Well, now that you've seen what our life is like aboard ship, what do you think of it? Would you have been a good sailor on our ship? We'd like you to try your hand at some of our jobs to find out. So long, mateys. I hope I'll be seeing you aboard.